For almost 100 years, 44 Canadian soldiers have lain forgotten in a potato field in northern France. These men were killed in Canada's most famous battle of the Great War, the Battle for Vimy Ridge. But they are not completely forgotten. I'm Norm Christie. I've written more than 20 books on Canada's military history, including the King and Empire series on Canada's soldiers in the Great War. I've also been records officer of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, and I've been researching Canada in the Great War for more than 30 years. And I believe the 44 men of the Canadian Scottish killed in action on Vimy Ridge are still buried in a field in France. Their bodies were never recovered as they were supposed to have been based on records put out in 1919. During the Great War, more than 400,000 Canadians went overseas and 60,000 of those men never returned to Canada. Of the 60,000, 20,000 are listed as missing. Some of them are buried as unidentified soldiers in the cemeteries, while others are still out there on the battlefield. After the war between 1919 and 1921, they brought in many isolated graves and smaller cemeteries into the current modern war cemeteries you now find in France. However, there is no doubt that thousands of these men were overlooked. I believe one of those cemeteries overlooked was the Crater Cemetery that holds the graves of 44 men of the Canadian Scottish. So why did this happen? How were these graves overlooked? Well, there's two possible reasons. One is strictly a clerical error made after the war. You have to keep in mind the Imperial War Graves Commission had to bring in more than 125,000 bodies and register more than 700,000 graves. So the fact there could be a clerical error would not be a surprise. Secondly, the original cross marking the Crater Cemetery was destroyed by shell fire either in 1917 or 1918. So when the men looked for the grave after the war, they couldn't find it because it was no longer marked. But the reality is there is just so many bodies out there, so many thousands and thousands of remains, that they overlooked some. They just made mistakes and overlooked them. So what are we going to do about it now? We've proved conclusively that the graves are there. They're still on the battlefield, at least from a paperwork point of view, from a documentary point of view. But now we have to do an actual check of the ground. We have to do non-destructive testing of the subsurface area to determine exactly where this crater cemetery is. And that's what this fundraiser is about. We need to raise $110,000 to get an engineering team over there to do ground penetrating radar and electrical analysis. We need a documentary team to go over there and record this as it's going on. We need to compensate the farmers and we have to pay for security and safety issues that are going to arise in doing this examination on a very dangerous battlefield. It is important to all of us that these men be recovered. It is important to us as Canadians, as individuals and to the country as a whole. These men gave their lives for our freedom and we should never ever forget that. And the least we can do is to recover their remains and give them a proper burial. CA-40 right now is really a potato field. And this is just unacceptable. We have an obligation to all of us to come forward and raise the money to make sure that these men have a proper burial. I feel you as Canadians will come together and join our team in donating money to recover our Vimy heroes. Just after this, we're going to run a piece of the missing and you'll get a better understanding of what happened to CA-40 and why it is so important for us to move ahead on this project. This is Canada's National War Memorial on Vimy Ridge, and it honors 60,000 fallen Canadians from the First World War. Few people realize that 20,000 of those men are missing. The 12,000 names that are engraved around the bastion of the Vimy Memorial commemorate the Canadians missing in France and every name has a story. Private William Johnston Milne, Victoria Cross. He was a Scot living in Saskatchewan when he enlisted, and he was killed in action April 9, 1917. And it was during this action he won his Victoria Cross. 
He was known to be buried in a cemetery near Tilu, but today he has no grave. Each missing man is an unfinished story, and for their loved ones at home, they simply vanished. Now, after a hundred years, we can resolve some of the mysteries of the missing. But there are many mysteries about the missing we can try to solve. There are other Canadian battlefields, including the most famous Vimy Ridge, where thousands of Canadians are still missing. This is the battlefield of Vimy Ridge, just east of Nouvelle St. Vast. In particular, it was the battlefield fought over by the Canadian Scottish on April 9, 1917. These farmers' fields just south of Nouvelle St. Vast were once the bloodiest battlefield of the Great War. And it's hard to imagine today that these pretty fields would have been riven with trenches and mines and tunnels and dead bodies. This was an infamous battlefield. In fact, it was so dangerous that the men could not come to the front line overland. They had to take underground tunnels. And this is roughly the location of Bentata Redoubt, which was connected to Maison Blanche, which is the trees just over here, by an underground tunnel. And for the operations on April 9th, 600 men of the Canadian Scottish had to come underground through Bentata Tunnel into this position and then be funneled up to the front lines. This is a trench map of this area, and you can actually see all the different positions, all the names of the trenches, and this is the Bentata Redoubt, which is where we're standing. So the front line, in fact, is just over here, and it's just on the other side of the road, and that's where the Canadian Scottish are going to make their jump off on April 9, 1917. There are uh, several accounts uh, of this battle by the Canadian Scottish. Interesting enough, the casualties were so high in the, in the uh, opening waves that you don't get too many uh, uh, memoirs. But one of the mopping up officers actually wrote a letter back. He was a man from the Bank of Commerce, and he sent his letter back to uh, the boys at the bank to explain what happened on April 9, 1917. Three nights before the attack, my company moved into support trenches. It was impossible to get any sleep. The crash of our artillery was terrific. Then we received orders to go and relieve a company in the frontline trenches. The trenches were the worst I'd been in. Water up to the knees. We knew that the big attack was coming in a day or so. And all I prayed for was one night's rest. The front lines were roughly along here, running parallel to the road that you can see up here. No Man's Land was about 125 yards across. And of course, for the Canadian Scottish, they had one distinct problem, is that No Man's Land was full of craters. Mining warfare was huge between the French and Germans in 1915, and they fired off hundreds of mines in this area. So No Man's Land was literally created by these underground mine craters. On one side of the crater was the Canadian lines, and on the other side was the German lines. And of course, the Germans had massed their machine guns up there. 
And these were slimy craters. They were from the chalk. They were uh, 20 to 30, 40 feet deep in some cases, some even bigger. And of course, they provided a huge obstruction for the attack on Vimy Ridge, April 9th, because it would funnel the attack. Therefore, if it funneled the attack through a tight passage, the German machine gunners could concentrate on them. And that's what happened with the Canadian Scottish. Sharp on time, 5.30 a.m. Easter Monday, there came one big crash. The whole weight of our artillery swept the Hun line, and we walked out, following under our barrage. Lines of Canadian soldiers with intervals between, and on our right, a Scottish division with the kilts swaying and bayonets fixed. The noise was terrific, but above all the din of the big guns could be heard the rattle of the Han machine guns as they endeavored to stop the rush of the Canadians. The Canadian Scottish attacked across these fields and they were caught in heavy machine gun fire, particularly from the crater positions. And this is where most of their casualties took place. After they finally overwhelmed the Germans, they started to push on towards Tilu, and that's where their second group of men went down. After the battle, this area was strewn with Canadian Scottish dead and the burial officer had to come back and bury them. And they collected 44 of them and buried them in a crater, and the cemetery was called CA-40. CA-40 was a designation used by the Canadian Corps burial officer. C was for Canadian, A was for First Division, and 40 was for the grave number. And these graves were registered by the Canadian Corps burial officer and later passed to the Imperial War Graves Commission. The Canadian Corps burial officer registered all the graves, so it would have a name, CA-40. It would also have a distinct trench map reference right to this point. And the trench map reference was 51B-A-10-C-9-7. And that's where the X is, right here, and it's right where we're standing. You can see roughly where CA-40 was. This is the crater position, or what's left of an old First World War crater. And you can see the ground has subsided and you can see the shape of the crater. It's likely this is where the men were buried in 1917. After the war, exhumation companies came to these battlefields and picked up isolated remains in smaller cemeteries and concentrated them into the larger war cemeteries. CA-40, which was in this crater, was apparently exhumed and moved over to Nine Elms Cemetery over there. So therefore, we should be able to go over to Nine Elms and find them. This is Nine Elms Military Cemetery on the Vimy Battlefield. It's one of the most important cemeteries that marked the battle, and I'm here looking for the grave of a Victoria Cross winner. Amongst the dead in CA-40 is Victoria Cross winner William J. Milne, whose name, with all his other missing comrades, is on the Vimy Memorial. For most conspicuous bravery and devotion to duty in attack, on approaching the first objective, Private Milne observed an enemy machine gun firing on our advancing troops. Crawling on hands and knees, he succeeded in reaching the gun, killing the crew with bombs, and capturing the gun. He again located a machine gun in the support line and stopped this second gun as he had done the first. His wonderful bravery and resource on these two occasions undoubtedly saved the lives of many of his comrades. Private Milne was killed shortly after capturing the second gun. The original part of the cemetery is over here. After the war, hundreds of graves were brought in from smaller cemeteries, isolated graves, and finally, you have this cemetery here. And some of the sites that were brought in were graves CA-26, CA-35, and CA-40. After the war, when the exhumation companies brought the soldiers in here, they filled out a form 
giving the trench map reference where the body was found, details of the body, and any particulars found on the corpse. Therefore, you know exactly where each man was buried. You can go plot, row, grave, all the way through the cemetery, and that's a ground check. We have the copies of the original documents here, and we can go grave by grave to find out if CA-40 is, in fact, in this cemetery. I've completed the ground check, and it's clear the men from CA-40 are not buried here. So where are they? I've looked for the men of CA-40 in a dozen different cemeteries where the dead of Vimy are buried, and they are nowhere to be found. But why would they be in the records as being transferred to Nine Elms if that is not what happened? Why would the records be incorrect? We have to remember that there were 700,000 Commonwealth soldiers killed on the Western Front, and one in four are buried in unidentified graves. Therefore, it was understandable that a clerical error could occur back in the 1920s, when the War Graves Commission had taken on the enormous task of trying to account for all the men. So I believe that the men of CA-40 are still on the battlefield. So to properly bury them, we're going to have to do what the Australians did at Fromel's. But there is a big difference. The Australians were buried in shallow graves, but the Vimy battlefield, as we have seen, was full of mine craters, as the aerial reconnaissance photographs of 1917 show. There's Fissick Crater, Bado Crater, and Zivi Crater, which was later used as a cemetery. This is Zivi Crater Cemetery, and prior to the Battle of Vimy Ridge, it was just a deep mine crater near the German line. After the fighting of April 9th, the burial parties put 53 bodies in here. And after the war, they chose not to exhume them because the bodies were all entangled. I believe CA-40 is similar to this. It contains the 44 men of the 16th Battalion Canadian Scottish killed April 9th, and that includes William Milne, VC. I'm now convinced that the Crater Cemetery, CA-40, is still in these fields, and it was never concentrated into Nine Elms or any other cemetery. So to prove they are here, we're going to have to dig in this field. We are meeting with Fabrice Poteau, our local liaison, to find out what's involved. À mon avis, tu peux pas creuser comme ça. Il faut poser la question à la sécurité civile. C'est eux, c'est eux qui creusent. C'est très, très dangereux. Peut-être. Peut-être. Et beaucoup d'eau bout. Ah oui. De gaz. Ah oui, oui. And so we must meet with the local mayor and his council to make our case that the Canadians are still here. But Tilu was the site of many battles during the war, and many bodies have been found here. C'est pas possible. C'est pas possible parce que. Euh... Sur ce secteur-là, hein, sur ce petit secteur-là, il y, y a eu des fouilles qui ont été euh, faites. Okay. Euh, des, 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 non, des, non, quelques corps. Enfin, ouais, femmes, voilà, une vingtaine. Mmh. Euh, mais euh, ce sont essentiellement des soldats français. Ce sont, des ce français. sont essentiellement des soldats français lors de l'attaque euh, des Français ouais. en septembre 1915. Ouais. 
Comme des cratères requiers aux Canadiens, je crois que je suis pas aux Canadiens, sur la zone, ou alors... Ah oui, oui, beaucoup, Brett Broadmarsh. Nous, on appelle ça, nous, on appelle ça des Canadiens. Ce qu'on vient vous voir aujourd'hui, c'est pour vous demander l'autorisation de creuser. Si vous nous donnez l'autorisation de creuser, on va faire en sorte d'amener une équipe qui va être capable de creuser pour voir, pour découvrir ce dont on vous parle. Bon, les fouilles ont été réalisées parfois à 4-5 mètres de profondeur. Oui, mais 4-5 mètres, ce n'est pas... C'est pas profond et insuffisant. Vous avez, vous avez le type de cimetière à Zivy et Litchfield. C'est la même chose. Et vous avez la distance par le, la terre à la, le crater. Et les tombes sont sous la terre. Je pense à 7 ou 8, peut-être 9 mètres. Euh, ah, sous la terre. Parce que c'est un, un, un crater de mine. Oui. Ce oui, n'est oui. pas le crater oui, oui. de Dobu. Même si c'est plus profond que les recherches qui ont déjà été faites, on va aller plus à fond. Et puis, c est, c est ce on, on a besoin de votre euh, autorisation, on ne peut pas le faire sans vous. Non, non, mais ici, la communauté élue avec nos cousins canadiens, oui. on a des liens très forts. Hein, donc, bien. vous êtes les bienvenus. Et si on peut vous aider, il n'y a aucun problème. The mayor and the council of Tilu have given us permission to dig. It shows that even after 100 years, they still remember the men of the Canadian Corps who liberated their village. The next step in recovering the men of CA-40 is to get permission from the local bomb disposal squad, the security civil, that it is safe for us to excavate this great war battlefield. Ici, la place. Oui. D'accord. Aujourd'hui, c'est là. C'est dangereux ici, pour Abu? Oui, c'est un secteur assez dangereux. On va, on va trouver énormément de munitions. C'est pour métal ou acier ou... Euh... C'est euh, une sonde grande profondeur. Ça, ça va enregistrer euh, les perturbations magnétiques et ça prend uniquement euh, l'acier et la ferraille. Je pense que c'est la place ici pour les cimetières manqués. C'est là Oui, c'est sûrement ici. So now we are on the trail of the missing soldiers of CA-40. 100 mètres. 100, 150 mètres. Non, non, là, non, ouais. là. Ah ouais, je vois bien. Ah, ici, on voit bien un cratère aussi. Là. Oui, oui c'est la place. Ah, là, on We're going to have to dig down 7 to 10 meters, just like Zivi Crater. Another challenge is more than a million shells were fired on this battlefield during four years of the Great War. Cet champ est euh, pollué? Oui, oui, oui. Parce que vous avez une autre place. L'autre en dessous, à 100 mètres d'ici, ça a été dépollué. On a, on a retrouvé énormément d'obus, mais cette, cette, cet endroit ici n'a pas été fait. Parce que la limite d'implantation de la zone se trouve à 100 mètres. So, après 100 années, il y a beaucoup d'obus ici. Oui, oui, oui. On ramasse encore énormément d'obus dans, dans ce secteur ici, dans le secteur de neuville saint vaud Tellu, Vimy. On ramasse encore énormément d'obus tout au long de l'année. Et les fermiers, pas de problème avec... Euh... Si, si. Maintenant, avec les nouveaux engins agricoles, de temps, de temps en temps, il y a des accidents. Oui. oui. Hundreds of thousands of shells landed on these fields. Due to the faulty manufacture of timers or impact fuses hitting soft ground, thousands did not explode, but might easily detonate if disturbed by digging. Chemical weapons were also used by the armies fighting here, and even 100 years later, many shells containing deadly mustard gas are unstable and could be lethal if disturbed. So the bomb disposal crew must examine the ground to detect irregularities in the magnetic field. If there is a bomb or other metal object there, it will cause the detector to beep. Un gros écho, là. Mais c'est profond, mon avis. C'est ça, le problème. Ouais. 
the chief of the bomb squad is marking the field where the strongest signals are. On marque l'impact pour revenir ensuite pour terrasser à la pelle hydraulique parce que c'est trop à la main c'est trop c'est trop profond. It will take some work before we can exhume the missing of CA-40. But this should be no deterrent to giving the men of the Canadian Scottish a proper burial. Clearing the battlefield of unexploded ordnance, exhuming the remains of the Canadian Scottish, identifying them and reburying them in a war cemetery will take money and time. It's been a hundred years since these Canadian soldiers went off to war. Many of them never came back and simply vanished in these distant fields of the old Western Front. The strenuous work of April 9th is over, and the Canadians are resting on the field, rested from the Hun. I can tell you the people of Canada have every reason to be proud of their boys out here. They did their work well, and the only trouble was to keep them back when our objective was reached. Everything went like clockwork and beyond all expectations. We put it over the Hun on every turn, and he surrendered in bunches. The taking of Vimy Ridge by the Canadians will long remain a red-letter day in Canadian history. This potato field was once Canada's most famous battlefield, the battlefield of Vimy Ridge. And across these fields, the Canadian Scottish attacked April 9, 1917, and many of their men were shot down in this area. After the battle, 44 of these men were brought to a crater right here and buried, and the cemetery was known as CA-40. The records indicate that the graves were exhumed and moved to Nine Elms Cemetery, and now we know that is not true. So now we can resolve the mystery of CA-40. The 44 men are still buried here. This is not proper commemoration for these men, and it's about time they got the respect they are due.